Ever since Instagram introduced the Reels feature a few months ago, I've been making a ton of these little like three-way split videos, just going back through old footage and making something new out of it. It's been a really cool creative exercise for me, and it also seems like a lot of you guys have been digging the Reels as well. I'm gonna do the influencer thing, but I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys about how I make these little videos for real. So today I wanna to take you through the entire process, how I choose which clips to use, arrange them in the three-way split, grading, sound design, text compositing, everything. Before we jump into that, I just wanna briefly plug myself. Uh, as many of you already know, I have a channel membership where you can pay a monthly fee and get access to raw footage from my videos, longer extended uncut tutorials, and a members only Discord server where I can answer your questions and provide feedback on your work. This month, to go along with this video, I put together an hour long uncut tutorial about how I make Instagram Reels. So I started from scratch and just made one and you get to see the entire process from start to finish completely uncut. Along with that video, I also released raw footage from a bunch of reels that I've posted over the last few months. So you can download that and practice for yourself. And then of course you can share it with me and get some in-depth feedback on your work. If you're interested in becoming a channel member, there will be a join link in the description and you can also just click the join button on my channel homepage. All right. Let's go ahead and jump into this actual video, starting out with choosing which clips to actually use. The least interesting, most important part of the process. To find the footage I'm gonna use for an Instagram reel, I'm really going through old footage and looking for just a cool little nugget, like a cool moment from a past shoot. I'm also looking for clips that have some kind of story or progression, so it's not just a bunch of clips that look nice when they're arranged next to each other. So for example, in this reel, if you go from top to bottom, we see the road, then we see a car driving on the road, and then we see a car stopped next to the road. So obviously it's not like a proper story, but there is a progression from frame to frame. Same thing with this one. If we go from top to bottom, we see a house, then a road, and then a waterfall. So it's kind of like home, journey, and destination, just a bit of a subtle progression from top to bottom. I also like to have a static shot in the middle when possible, so like a tripod shot or a time lapse. This is good for a couple reasons. One, it just allows me to add some symmetry and not have like too much clutter and constant motion throughout the reel. And it also gives me an opportunity to make a nice title card in the middle because a static shot is way easier and usually looks better when I'm compositing text into it as we'll get to later on. Now that we've chosen which clips to use, let's talk about how I actually arrange these into three even sections. And there's gonna be a lot of math and big numbers in this part of the video. So just buckle up and bear with me. I want these reels to be very detailed. So I make them in 4K, 3840 by 2160. But since they're going on Instagram, they also need to be vertical. So we just rotate that vertically and it's 2160 by 3840. If we divide 3840 by three, we get 1280. So each of the three individual sections is 2160 by 1280. And of course you can totally make one of these with two sections or four sections. I just like to use three because it helps me to put the text right in the center of the frame. And it also kind of works as like a storytelling tool, right? So it's easy to go like beginning, middle, end or wide shot, medium shot, close up. All right, so now let's start out in Premiere. And this is where it gets a little complicated, but stick with me here. So instead of making a 2160 by 3840 comp, I actually start out with a 2160 by 1280 sequence and drag each of the clips in individually. I take the clips that are gonna be on the top section, then the middle, then the bottom, and put them all on separate tracks. So the bottom track is the bottom section, then the second track up, middle, and the third track up is that top section. At this point, I also scale each clip up so that it fills the entire frame, just so that we don't have black gaps in between the sections in the final post. Once I've done that, I make each track into its own individual nested sequence, and then change the master comp back to 2160 by 3840. And finally, to finish off that three-way split setup, I move the top and bottom sections to actually be at the top and bottom of the frame. And I'll make this one easy for you. Top one, move it to 640 pixels. Bottom, move it to 3200. 
you're welcome. And you might be like, Aiden, that's like a really weird roundabout way to do this. Why didn't you just make a 2160 by 3840 comp and then drag all of the clips in together and position them that way? Well, if we look at what we have now, we have each section, the top, middle, and bottom in their own separate nested sequence. So we can go in and make changes to them, color grade the clips individually, stabilize the clips, much more easily without messing up the rest of the composition. So if we hadn't done this and we wanted to use warp stabilizer on a clip, we'd have to nest that clip and then change the nested sequence and then come back to the main comp and reposition the clip. And it's just a whole ordeal. So it may not seem like it on the surface, but I promise this is definitely a much faster way to set this up. All right, now that we've got all our clips arranged in the right spot, let's add in our text in the middle. The first thing you need to do is really rack your brain and think of a very corny, very influential, like short, snippy catchphrase. So like, morning routine, views for days, roadside finds, canyon clouds, boardwalk blues, bonus points if it alliterates. Once I have the perfect caption in mind, I like to composite it sort of seamlessly into the scene. So I'll do this using like a Luma key or a mask or sometimes even motion tracking it into the scene. This is just an extra little detail that helps to make these, you know, just a little cooler. So for example, on this one, I used a Luma key to make the text appear as though it's passing under the trees. Here, I just masked out the front of the fire towers so that the text is behind it. And then for this one, I motion tracked it onto the wall in the background and added a glow effect so that it kind of glows and looks the same as the lights blending into the scene. This part of the process usually takes some trial and error, but I think it's worth it just to add that little bit of quality and creativity into the scene. Finally, if I have a static shot in the middle, I also like to animate that middle section to push in. So that just gives it a bit of extra motion so the entire frame is moving. It's not just static in the middle of the composition. And it also helps to kind of blend the text just a little more into the scene because they're both moving at the same time. Now that we have that set up, the next step in the process is color grading. But before we dive into that, I wanna take a brief second to talk to you about the sponsor of today's video, Canva. Canva allows you to design assets like pitch decks and Instagram stories much more quickly and easily and with better results by giving you access to a ton of customizable templates and stock elements. Animated elements tend to yield higher engagement, so Canva is also focused on helping you to add motion into your designs with stock videos and animated graphics. In addition to using their library, it's also really easy to upload your own photos and videos. A while back when I initially made my template for pitch decks to send to brands. It took me hours to put together and even after all that work, it's still super tedious to change anything about it. And whenever I put together a new deck, I'm spending a ton of time just sifting through photos online, trying to find the vibe that I'm looking for. And Canva solves all of those problems with their customizable templates and access to millions of stock elements. As for pricing, Canva Pro is just $13 a month for a team of up to five people, which is a steal in and of itself. But there's also a completely free version and a 45 day free trial of Canva Pro which you can find linked in the description of this video. Thank you once again to Canva for sponsoring this video. And now let's jump into some color grading. And this is something I'm not gonna go too in depth on since I've already made a few videos all about my grading process. Those will be in the cards and also linked in the description so you can watch those and learn literally my entire process for color grading. Basically the goal here is to have consistent tones and a nice balance between all of the clips. So if the bottom clip is a lot brighter than the top and middle, it's going to stand out. So I'm basically grading each clip individually, looking at the entire composition to see what sticks out, and then going through and tweaking these little details so that they all match and balance out together. And finally, sound design. The first step of which is to build out a nice immersive ambience for the entire scene. I'll use several layers of ambient sound to build out a nice immersive atmosphere. So I would add, you know, maybe wind and then wind in the trees and then the sound of rain dripping from the trees and then maybe the sound of some birds in the background. When I'm adding in ambient tracks, I also like to slow them down to about 50% speed. This just helps to give them more of a dreamy vibe because even though it's subtle, it's just subconsciously not what you're used to hearing 
in your day-to-day -day life. Once I've built out a good ambient atmosphere for the entire scene, I'll start going in and adding some individual sounds for each clip. The dance that I end up having to do here is making sure that sounds from different sections don't compete with each other, right? So if I have two clips that have someone walking in them, I'll probably only add footsteps for one of those clips so that we don't have those two footstep sounds competing with each other. Finally, I'll add in some transitional sounds to help the video loop more seamlessly. So this could be just a whoosh sound effect, it could be thunder, it could be a car passing. I place these sounds right at the end of the clip so that they build up to the loop at the end where the video restarts on Instagram. And then I'll cut the part that happens after the video ends and drag it back to the beginning of the clip so that when that video loops, the sound still continues throughout and it creates that seamless loop in the sound design. If you want to know all the ins and outs of my sound design, I've made like five videos on the topic at this point. So I'll link a playlist right up here with all of my sound design tutorials. So you can check that out for a bit of further reading on the topic. And finally, probably the most asked question about my Instagram reels, what are my export settings? Super simple, just like the composition 2160 by 3840. And I raised the bit rate to hundred megabits per second. That's it. I wish I could give you a technique for dodging Instagram's compression and getting really good quality results when posting to the platform, but I can't. No matter how high quality your post is, at the end of the day, Instagram doesn't care. Their compression is probably gonna ruin your day no matter what. So unfortunately, you just have to look past it Realize that it's not about the pixels, it's about the story and the quality of what you're posting, and people will see that. Everything on Instagram looks like garbage once it's on Instagram. But if you're not already, it's definitely worth cranking up that bitrate so that you're not already compressing it in the export. And finally, the most important thing is to always be creative, switch it up, and build on this format. This is like a super low hanging fruit idea. Every filmmaker on Instagram is making these three way split reels. That's why I'm adding the text, going really in depth with the sound design, trying to give it a bit of a story, is because I don't wanna be posting exactly what everyone else on the platform is posting. So do the same thing, try and switch it up, make it your own, do it a little differently, and do it a little better. All that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video, learned something new from it. Once again, if you're interested in an hour long uncut tutorial on how I make these where you get to see the entire process, that membership will be linked below where you can watch that, download the raw footage from those reels, and of course, join that members only Discord server where I can interact a lot more closely with you. I think it goes without saying, but I post a lot on Instagram these days. You're missing out on a lot of what I do if you're not following me over there. So if you like pretty pictures and pretty reels, at Aiden Robbins. If you enjoyed this, learned something new, feel free to show your support by leaving a like on the video, sharing it with your friends, or even subscribing to my channel. I upload new videos like this every single week or so. But that's all for this one. Keep creating and I'll see you in the next one.